Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and it's time for the November version of the Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event art crawl, whatever you want to call it, which is basically a giant hop on YouTube with all kinds of creators of all kinds of different types of arts and crafts and it is under the hashtag Love Winter Art. It will be going on from the 16th to the 20th of this month. So I wanted to do something for the uh, hashtag event, so I'm combining that with the other hashtag event I'm doing, which is a November Daily Art Journal, which I've been doing every day <laughs> this entire month. So if you just showed up, that's what I've been doing all month, and there's lots of videos. The prompt for that today is steampunk. And I was thinking to myself that I could do steampunk snowmen. And why did I think of that? Well, gears are round, snowmen have round shapes. A predominant theme in steampunk is, is gears and mechanical type stuff. Um, also, I was at a play last night of um, Bram Stoker's Dracula and it was done at a local community college and there's a kid in that um, that was playing a major role that we wanted to see so we went to see it and they had made it so much more interesting by adding steampunk to it and all their costumes and everything were so cool and I really just liked them so much so I decided that I would do that for this page so I knew that I was going to use a lot of different, try to use a lot of different media, so I decided to get a piece of 9 by 12, 140 pound um, watercolor cardstock. I did end up cutting this down to 8 by 10 eventually, but that was after the whole piece was finished. I just thought it looked better um, to have the borders closer in, and I wanted it to fit into something that it wouldn't fit in as a 9 by 12. But this is nice, heavy cardstock so that I can beat it up a lot with mixed media and get it wet if I want to and do layers. I didn't end up, end up doing that many layers though, but I thought I was going to when I first started. So the first thing I'm doing, of course, is drawing my figures. Um, I don't know if there's any steampunk snowman clip art out there. I don't know. Uh, I didn't search. I'm assuming I'm not the first person to think of this. So there might be uh, something cute out there that you could use if you wanted to, to make something similar if you don't draw. Um, I'm using a drafting pencil, a mechanical drafting pencil with soft graphite. That's a 2B graphite in it. This is my favorite tool for drawing because it erases easily, it blends easily if I want to blend it with a, a stump, and um, I don't break the lead because, well, if I do, I just click more out. So I really like this type of a tool for drawing, and I recommend it, and I will link this particular Pentel GraphGear 1000 in the links below so that you can find it if you really want to try it. It's a great pencil. I love it. Also using a white eraser. I keep going from kneaded erasers to gum erasers to white erasers, trying to figure out which one I like the best. And I'm thinking that this is the one I like, the white eraser, especially on this particular surface. It does erase very cleanly and easily um, without leaving any residue, so I like that. So I'm just making a male and a female snowman, and uh, the male has a waistcoat on with a vest. He's got his pocket watch. Uh, he has mechanical hand, um, goggles for driving his steam car. Of course, steam and uh, snowman probably really wouldn't go very well together. <laughs> he might melt. And uh, just other gears and, you know, gears for buttons and, and all that type of stuff. And then my lady snowman has on... Uh, I think it might be called a crinoline. It's the thing that goes, back in Victorian days, it's what goes underneath the dress to make it fluff out. But um, the, st the steampunk stuff is like Victorian era clothing and ideas mixed with um, the Industrial Revolution at the beginning, 
where they were using a lot of steam things and then adding in cute um, idea like invention ideas of weird ray guns and I just it's just it's very interesting and different and um, something that a lot of people are into so I gave her a hat and I gave her a crinoline and then she then I have this uh, pendant that I made doing wire working and with little watch gears that is a heart shape that has little gears inside of it um, I made it a long time ago and I just drew something very similar for her to wear around her neck um, the next thing I'm doing is using light molding paste <clears throat> excuse me um, this is the one that I like I've settled on one after trying different pastes this stuff dries really quickly it's I don't have to you know be frustrated by waiting a really long time for it to dry it's a golden product um, there are other light molding pastes paste or modeling paste or whatever you want to call it uh, Ranger makes one that I hear is really good but I haven't tried theirs so I just say go for the light one it doesn't need to be hard and crackly you know this stuff is almost kind of like uh, it's squishy when it's done I mean it, it holds up but it has give to it it's like maybe a polyester or something I don't know but anyway I used it to scrape around the edges to, to add texture and to scrape along the bottom where the snow banks are to add texture and then I of course put it through a bubble stencil to add different bubblies in the background so once that is done I did go ahead and do all the inking this is now all completely inked I used Faber-Castell pet pins um, different varying length uh, widths of them they come in a in a little wallet of a lot of different nibs and widths and that's what I used to do my illustration it is a India ink which of course is then permanent once it's it's on there and it doesn't run or have any problems with getting wet so they're really good pins I recommend them and I haven't I haven't destroyed any of the nibs and I haven't um, like you know nothing is worn out or ran out and I've been doing quite a bit of illustration so I think that they're really a pretty high quality product um, then I'm using a baby wipe and this PBO Dyna iridescent paint in blue green it's kind of it's turquoise but it's called blue green I don't know why <laughs> and I just rub that around and it it gives the effect of being able to go down in the modeling paste and give it some dimension both visually as well it already had dimension from texturally so it works really well to use an iridescent paint because the nature of the paint is to have different refractions with with the, um, the shininess in it which really helps with bringing out the texture so that worked well and I just applied it with that baby wipe just rubbing it in with that uh, then I went around and touched up all the edges with a brush to get because you know the baby wipe it's it's not a precise tool <laughs> so I can get right up to the edges so I did that with a brush and that worked fine and then my next thing is going to be something that I saw someone else doing and I'm going to I'm going to do it a lot more I'm going to give it a lot more um, experimentation but it's using pastel pencils these are pastel pencils I hardly ever use them I use the I bought them well I didn't buy them I got them as a gift but in conjunction with the pan pastels because I thought okay the pan pastels they don't um, they aren't very precise because you just have these little tools and then I thought maybe I could use these pastel pencils uh, in conjunction with the other pastel pan pastels but I just really just don't even remember to get them out very often but I saw somebody on YouTube and I can't remember who it was I'm sorry but they were using um, the pastel pencils in conjunction with blending them with white gesso and I thought well that's interesting that's an, something I haven't thought of doing uh, I do use a acry white acrylic when I use my neo colors to blend them and make them more permanent but I didn't ever think about doing it with a pastel pencil so I'm gonna explore that a lot more because that's an interesting concept to me and I want to try it out but 
I tried it out by using this gray pencil. You know, white isn't white. When you look at something that's white, it's actually just a blending of a bunch of different lights and shadows. And so in order to make something white, because we know snow is white unless something happened to it, um, you need to have a shadow in order for it to look more realistic. So sometimes I use light blue, sometimes I use gray. Uh, this time I used gray and blended it out with the white gesso all over the bodies of the little snow people. And it gives it a lot more realistic look to it. Then I'm doing some mark making with the leftover gesso that I had um, with some round mark making tools that are on my desk. I used a tube and then this one is the inside of a um, like a cash register receipts the paper and it it looks like a gear because it's got like these little extra it's plastic and then it's got these little extra lines in the side of it so I use those two then now I'm doing that same type of a concept with the snow by using the watercolor light blue to give shadows in the snow so that it's not just flat white and that also does catch on the texture that I added using the molding paste and the plastic palette knife. So then I'm going to color in my image using these uh, Kiritake watercolors. These are interesting watercolors. They, they're opaque kind of, kind of almost like a gouache only not labeled as a gouache but I'm using them in the traditional sense where you uh, apply water and then put in the pigment into the water and it is contained by being only in the place where you put the water. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making sense today. <laughs> I'm still thinking about someone telling me that I sound like I'm in a tin can. <laughs> I don't know if my sound is good or not. So. Um, just putting the water in the place I want the color to be and then dabbing in the color and I'm using a, a high quality brush that's that's what makes a difference in watercolor I've decided um, I'm not a that good at watercolor yet but I'm working on it <laughs> and you need an, you need a good brush you need a good brush that will hold a lot of water up inside of it so this is a fairly large brush but yet it comes to a very very fine tip and I can do very fine detail work with it but it's holding all that water which is assisting me in applying the color it just it's just important to have a good brush for this That's all I can say I got it at the uh, one and only Blick store in the entire state of Arizona which is in Phoenix I was up there and I was like we have to stop at the Blick store <laughs> The people ask what they're like, what? <laughs> we have to stop there. So I, that's when I got this brush. And my large tub of Liquitex um, matte gel that I like to use. I got the big tub of it while I was there. Okay, so here's the thing that happens in watercolor. You have to work in a little section at a time and not touch the other section that's wet still. And I did when I was trying to do the vest, I touched the waistcoat. And what you have to do is work in this section, then go to a different area and work in this section, then go to a different area. And don't let them touch because the green from the waist from the vest bled into the blue of the waistcoat because I accidentally let the waters touch. So that's something you just kind of have to pay attention to. I thought I was doing good, but I did not leave enough of a gap. <laughs> So I just uh, blotted it and then moved on to the top hat. And then I'll go back and do the green again. Because now the area is dry enough that there's not a puddle of water sitting on top of the waistcoat that can get attached to the water of the vest and bleed into each other. So watercolor is fun and I do want to do it a lot more. I just haven't... Um, really practiced enough yet. 
Well, I like these Kiritake watercolors and I like the brush, so now I'm ready. And I have some nice watercolor paper that's heavy, so I think that I should be able to do something soon. <laughs> I have so many things I want to do. I have like so many things I want to do. There's never enough time. So I started out making the scarf. I was going to make it red, but then I decided, meh, I don't really think he would wear a red striped scarf, so I changed it to brown and um, brown and gold type of a color, which I think a Victorian area <laughs> era snowman might wear. I don't know. <laughs> So on to the noses. Carrot noses. They're always cute. Now the watercolor set has a few metallic paints in it down at the bottom. There's a bronze and like kind of a pearl white and more of a gold color and I'm using the bronze, the kind of coppery bronze metallic paint to paint in her little arms and the half gears that make up her eyes and mouth. And it's just kind of hard to see that it's metallic um, but it is and I think it'll be able to show up when I do the pictures at the end, the close-up pictures, I think you'll be able to see what things are metallic. Maybe. But video and photo both are notorious for not showing up you know shiny shimmery things they're so much more shimmery and metallic -y than you think <laughs> and it just doesn't work to take a picture of it at all so I'm making her crinoline black um, it's a possibility that it should be like a creamy linen color if it was authentic but I needed to show up <laughs> and in steampunk I think that I've seen them in costume I've seen them wearing them black and no no skirt over it so I've seen a costume like that before so it works for me Then I decide to make her scarf green and the hat band green to kind of play off the green in the vest of his um, costume. More of a spring green, but still green, so that'll work, I think. Then once all of that has been allowed to dry, I'm going to start doing some other things with these Posca pins, gold and silver metallic Posca pins, and then the black and white, and then I have a copper, it's called rose copper, um, the Sharpie version of the acrylic paint pin, the water-based pin. So going to use that a little bit but not very much. I wish it was more copper colored or bronze colored than uh, this kind of a pinky pinky copper metallic weird stuff. I don't know why they made that. It's like oh here's gold, here's silver and then you're like well where's the copper and it turns out to be a pink copper. Strange. <laughs> so I don't use it very often or very much because I just really don't like the color. I really, really like copper, and I don't like pink copper. So I'm adding in um, a lot of the metallic details, like making the gears either um, gold or silver, making uh, his little mechanical hands silver. The watch chain is gold things like that so that uh, it'll have the real metallic-y look 
of steampunk. And then of course, alternately using the black and the white, I did, did end up having to go over a lot of the lines, the black lines at the end, which I'm not going to show because this is already way too long. <laughs> this project took about two hours to do because of all the lines that I have to do going over the lines. First in pencil, then in India ink, and then painting everything, and then going back with the India ink and going back over the lines where the paint made them more faint. So that's really what takes the time. And drawing always takes time because you have to come up with a concept. So be sure to go and uh, search Love Winter Art, hashtag Love Winter Art, to find out what else people, some other people have made. And of course, we're still doing our November Daily Art Journal with the hashtag. And so that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.